Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to show you how to shrink a tenon on a saxophone or a flute using some specialized tooling. Uh, before we get to that, we do have a hashtag for you today. It is the tenon shrinker. Make sure you take tenon shrinker, put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023, which includes uh, our advanced saxophone course. That's going to be on March 6th through 9th. We are going to go very in-depth into all of the processes of shrinking a saxophone tenon, uh, not just this very uh, slice, not this little bit of a slice that we're going to show you today, but we also have a saxophone modifications course coming up, show you how to we do all the cool stuff in the saxophone pro shop here uh, in our Uber Hall process, as well as a key fitting course on February 15th for you. Uh, professional technicians and non-professional technicians. We had a great time this past weekend, uh, two weekends ago. Last week, I don't it was, remember. Yeah, it was it sometime. Was, it's been so long ago. Uh, in Denton, Texas, we were also up in Arlington with our good buddy Joe Stroll for their uh, uh, specialty repair program. The next clinic that we have coming up is going to be in Mission Viejo, California, this Saturday. This Saturday. We're going to be talking about Neopads, and there's a bunch of other great clinicians. Uh, and you can go to napert.org events, napert.org events, and sign up for this clinic. You do not have to be a Napert member to attend the clinic you just have to register for the clinic itself our good buddy kurt altrack is going to be out there <laughs> good buddy good buddy. Our good buddy and boss slash, slash boss <laughs> slash boss, uh, boss. He is a good buddy good buddy Real slash good boss buddy. kurt's going to be out there talking about neopad so we hope to see you there and let me see oh i do have a winner that's really why they tuned in. <laughs> See, I don't care about the information. I don't care where they're going to be. Just tell me if I won. Uh, the winner for this week is Jesse Tellez. Tellez? 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 Uh, Jesse, send me an email to richrch at musicmedic.com. I will get you your discount for any of the courses that we have coming up, including our advanced saxophone course. Uh, so, Ryan, we're going to be getting into a specific process today. Um, we're going to be shrinking a tenon, like I said. Um, if they want to learn more about expanding a tenon, uh, I, I do have, we, I know that we did a live video on how to mm -hmm. uh, sh kind of fit a tenon on a saxophone, so I'll put a link to that below uh, later this morning. Uh, or tonight, if you're watching this tonight or next week, whenever it is yeah. that you see it, uh, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. That really helps us keep all of this going. And don't forget to put Tenon Shrinker in the comments below. Uh, so, Ryan, let's give them a little background on why we would shrink a tenon, yes. and then let's talk about the different types of specialized tooling that we do, we use for this job. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you, great intro, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so like you said, this is a very small slice of fitting a sax neck. Fitting a sax neck involves more than this. This is just that one portion of it. It's like when we did our, what was it, the, the, the reaming or the counter boring? That was a very small slice yes. of key fitting. Yes, there's stuff that comes before it. There's stuff that comes after it. This is just that very small slice. Um, the cases where you would want to shrink down your neck, let's say you are fitting it, you may be over expanded. You would need to shrink it down. Another great example is if you buy an aftermarket neck and that tenon is just too big to fit in to your saxophone. So here would be a good example here. It just doesn't want to go in. Okay, it's sticking Whoa. out probably about that much. Let me get a nice good, yeah, get, get a up. nice, nice close up. Oh, look at this! I can walk right in front of it. So you can see this is way too big to fit in. So this aftermarket neck would have to be shrunk down. Okay. Okay. So those are kind of the two cases. Again, realize very small slice. Stuff comes before, stuff comes after. If you want to learn more about it, put tenon shrinker in the, in the comments. You might mm -hmm. win fifteen percent off of our advanced sax course, March sixth through ninth, here in Wilmington. That's right. So, so Ryan, let's talk about the, uh, the thanks, tool. Thanks for that plug. Sorry, too. I, yes. I like that. I get a nickel every time I say that. Like, uh, share, and subscribe. That's two nickels. <laughs> So. Let's show them some of the tooling that's available for shrinking a tenon. Sure. Uh, we have ours, which we're going to show right you here. second. Yeah, don't look at it. Don't look at it right now. You can't see it. We're going to show you something else right now. Still a very good tool, and this was used in the Sax Pro Shop for a number of years when we would fit sax necks. We'll just, we'll just superimpose it right on top. And, and this is made by Bohm. Yes. I believe it's a German company. Um, but you can see here what this is, is that it uses collets to actually shrink the neck. Okay, if you were to put this in here like so, you put this into your actual shrinker, and then you would turn this, it's like a big screw, and this would actually bring this in and squeeze it down. 
Okay, very nice product. Like I said, we've used this for a number of years, fitting sax necks, shrinking sax necks um, here in the Sax Pro Shop, and it and it's worked fine until we designed our own. <sighs> there it is, nice right reveal. there. Well, the other reason we designed our own is that you know we were doing we saw some limitations to the tool, which you can kind of see. Uh, obviously, that it, it didn't have the ability to shrink a, uh, a couple of different instruments. So yeah, that's with these. We'll talk about these guys. Don't look at these. This is mm -hmm. the main one. What <laughs> about here? So, <laughs> so Ryan, let's talk about the features of the Music Medic 10 inch shrinker. I know this is kind of like a, a very high end product. It, is. it takes a long time to produce here. Everything is made in house at Music Medic. Um, we have our own smelting facility. We, we smelt them. No, we don't. But it is. Everything is made here in-house, tested thoroughly in the Sax Pro Shop. So how does this tool work? It is a collet shrinker. So you can see here there are the collets. Okay, there is a collet, rather. Uh, and that would fit in like so. We have these little indicator pins, which keeps the collet lined up. You see the slot in the collet lined up with the slot in the two body pieces right here. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. This is not operated by me cranking down on this, okay? Um, when this is actually engaged in shrinking, you can see if you look right here, is right there. You see how it got closer? So I'm actually engaging it right here. When I do this, it actually disengages it, okay? And it all has to do with this cam mechanism right in here, yeah. uh, where this is actually how we tighten it. And you guys can't hear it. If I had a mic up, there'd be little clicks. And you can feel a little click, little click on this very nice knurling. Okay? Um, so the way this, is, uh, this operates is we put our collet in, make sure it's lined up with our pin. And then I back this out all the way. I engage the shrinker so it's engaged when it's like this. Okay? And then I tighten this to where it stops. So right there, it doesn't want to turn anymore. I disengage it. I give it one click. And now we're zeroed in. Yes. Now we can actually start shrinking. I can give this one click, and that is half a thou? Half a thou, yes. Half a thou, half a thousand. I go, I, it's engaged, disengaged. Engaged, disengaged. I would then rotate my piece. If I needed to, to check or, or shrink a little bit more, I would give it one more click, another half thou, engage, disengage. And what I like right. about this is, you know, the, the money portion of this tool is going to be up here. Yep. This is a cam system, uh, so that's going to give you a lot of leverage without using a lot of force. Yes. Yeah, you can see I just do two fingers, mm -hmm. two fingers. And then this, uh, the knob, I guess I'm just going to call it the knob, is very accurate. It is. So, I mean, if you're just bringing the, the space in by a half a thousandth, that's a very small uh amount of what do they call it amount of space it's a very small amount increment a, a very small increment, increment so that's going to allow you to dial in yes. what your workpiece uh it's incredibly accurate ryan's going to yes. make it look very easy yes. here because it actually is if you have the right tools it is very easy to do this but you got to know what you're doing that's very important yes. okay so so ryan why don't you demonstrate uh how we do a neck here absolutely the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick so this is our neck that's a little too big Okay, it's our aftermarket neck. I need to shrink this down, make it fit into uh, the saxophone's receiver. You're going to pick a collet that is as close to this size as possible. And you can see that fits on all the way. You can see there's no space around. If I were to go to a collet that's a little too big, you can see, you can see first off, it moves. Okay, we're not going to be able to shrink this. And what you what could happen is if you start shrinking with a collet that's too big, it could cause this to turn into an oval. Okay. Or I've even seen it where this little slot will create a little indentation. Okay. So it's very important that you pick a collet that is the correct size. The nice thing about here at Music Medic is we have fractional sizes. So not only do we do half sizes, 24, 24.5, 25, 25.5, we have quarter sizes. So this is actually a 25.25. This one, I believe, is a right here, 24.75. Yes. Okay, so we do the fractional size, and you can see it would fit perfectly for shrinking this one down. Okay. So, again, to install your collet right there, just make sure everything's lined up. You have your pin. Again, it's not a load-bearing pin. Okay. Um, and, and, Ryan, why is there a pin and a notch in the collet? That is to keep this in line. Okay. It, you can see I don't really want to shrink like this. This force is coming in like this. And that's how I want to shrink my tenon. If this tenon or this collet was facing this way, this would be the appropriate direction in order to shrink this. 
So that is why we have our little notch. Okay, so we make sure our right we make sure the slots lined up with the slot of the tool. And I noticed on the bohm tool, I don't want to come be a Nancy comparing oh, here it is. lady guy, but I, and there is no notch on that. And, and I do know that that was something that you guys took into consideration yes. in the design to make sure that the collet itself didn't rotate while it was in the tool. Yes, most efficient, very efficient. Okay, so we've put our collet in. I'm going to loosen this, I'm going to engage. I tighten this up to where it stops wanting to turn right about there disengage one click we're good to go okay now we're zeroed in okay so now i just insert my neck i've already given it one turn give it a little shrink maybe give it a little rotation not a hundred percent necessary to do the rotation hmm. to be honest but i just do it out of force of habit all right so i did shrink it down a little bit let me check to see if it fits in Okay. The biggest feature of this cam is that this allows me to pick up right where I left off. Hmm. Okay. So I just need to continue on shrinking. All I need to do is give it one click, insert the neck, shrink, shrink. You don't have to say shrink, but it helps, I find. Shrink, rotate. You don't have to say that either. Shrink. Uh, Sorry funny. for all the fluff here. Uh. But uh, here we are. So I've shrunken this down. So we've given it two, I guess, two clicks. So that would be one thou. That's what I've shrunk it down to. Still a little too big. Okay, so let's go pick up where I left off. Give it, you know what? I'm going to give it two clicks. Another thou. Two clicks. Okay, insert the neck. Engaged, disengaged, engaged, disengaged. There we go. Let's see how we are this now. Oh, Ooh. look at that. Ooh, yes. Look at that. And again, folks, realize that this is just one small portion of neck fitting. We would go on if we were doing an actual neck fitting with the diagnosing to, to verify that this is not only um, fitting tight, that it's airtight as well. Okay. So. Now, Ryan, yes. what about, you've got the other holes. Let's show them. Sure. Uh, yes. I, I do have a question. Is this going to work on bass clarinet? Ah, that is a question that you have that is correct. Yes, it will. <laughs> it will. It will. This will fit alto. It actually will fit baritone. Yes. Alto, tenor, bass clarinet. Yes. Um, I'm assuming if there's an alto clarinet as well, it's about that size. We have, we'll probably have a collet that will fit it. Yeah, it may okay. it may fit the soprano hole yep. too. Yep. So or the uh, the flute hole. Let's talk about these two guys right here. So let's talk a little bit about this one at the bottom. Okay, this is for our flute head and foot joints. Okay, so let's say I have a flute head joint that is just it's too tough. Okay, it's way too big for whatever reason. This is too big, and we need to shrink it down. We're going to pick our head joint shrinker. And you can see this is much, much longer because you need to shrink much, much longer of an area on the flute head joint. Okay. So uh, we would put this in the bottom. Again, I'm going to loosen this up all the way. I'm going to insert my collet, make sure the pin's lined up. And again, you can see the slot in the collet's lined up with the slot in the body. Okay. I'm going to engage. I'm going to turn until it stops. Disengage. One click. We're good to go. Okay. So we're zeroed in. We're ready to go. So let me go ahead and Put this in. Okay. Now, one thing that is important when you're putting the flute head joint in, you don't want it to stick out past yeah. the bottom. So a lot okay. of times on the bottom, I'll just keep my finger oh, good there tip. just to make sure that that doesn't stick through. Again, engage, disengage. Look, two fingers. Well, one finger and a thumb. Now two fingers. Okay. Engage a little bit more. So that's another half thou half being thou. shrunk down. And, and when yeah. we say half thou, that's the actual jaws coming in and shrinking yes. tighter and tighter on the collet. That's right. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we're getting there. Getting there. Still a little tough. Put in my fancy flute holder there. Nice. Flute techs are, are just they're cringing <laughs> seeing this right here. What are you talking about? This is perfect. It's the floor model. Yeah, exactly. Demo model, yeah. I swear. It doesn't even have a head crown, so relax. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Let me see, you know what? I'm going to give it two clicks. Okay, another thou. We're two clicks. Bringing it down. Okay, making sure it's lined up with the collet. Shrink, shrink. Again, it doesn't help to say it, but it makes you feel better. 
there we go we're getting there okay and you can see the the great thing about this cam is i can pick up right where i left off if i had the old bohm style where it's, it's just tightening a screw who's to say that maybe this much tightened maybe this much tightened maybe this much tightened okay mm -hmm. this i can just pick it up if i need to go up one there we go engage disengage engage disengage shrink 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 Very nice. Much, much better. And so we might we might take another minute on that and and get it dialed in a little more. But let's yep. move on to sure. the middle hole. This guy right here. Well, yes. what is this one for? That is a great question. It's for our very small collets that fit removable soprano sex necks. Okay. I don't know if there is a collet shrinker on the market that does. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not aware. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't correct it. Okay. Again, same thing with the notch is going to line up with your pin. That keeps everything in alignment. Okay. Again, loosen this all the way. Engage it. Tighten it to where it stops. Disengage it. One click. We're zeroed in. Super easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same thing with this guy. Now, one question that you'll probably ask, although you haven't yet, is do you need to take the neck key off? Uh, yes, the active key. Okay. Yes, I would. Okay, I would, um, sometimes you can get around it, especially if you're around here and this is higher than this portion of it, you should be okay. But your best bet, again, you're moving this, you're grabbing it with your hands. You don't want to do any kind of damage to that bend neck key or whatever. But I find it's much easier if you remove the neck octave key. Same thing for alto and tenor? So, yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so gotcha. here we are. Give it one click, shrink, shrink, slight rotate, shrink, shrink, and you should be good to go. So now, Ryan, is it possible to do this type of work without this tool? Is it possible to shrink wow. a tenon without a collet shrinker? Not that I'm aware of, unless you have somehow mastered a, an, another art of physics where you, or maybe you have a really strong grip, you can just get in there and squeeze it. But there is no way to evenly shrink down, you know, a round tenon like this and keep it round. Okay. okay? Don't think you can take this and put it in a vise or grab your pair of whatever pliers mm -hmm. and squeeze that down. You really need the correct tool in order to do a good job. I've heard of guys that maybe, a lot of them have the expanders, can opener style expanders that expands yes. this, and then maybe you ex over expand. Uh, I've heard of, of people getting in there with sandpaper, oh. sanding this down. Guys, don't please don't do that. Please don't do that. You'll learn in the advanced sax course, March 6th through 9th, here at the, Sa the beautiful Saks Pro Shop in <laughs> Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, we will learn all about fitting or, or what to do and rather what not to do. Okay, so okay. We, in, the, in the course, you're going to go over the entire process. Yes. They'll also be hands-on. They'll have a chance to use a tool like this as well as... Everybody's, yeah, everybody's going to, we're all going to fit their necks, whatever example horn they bring. We're going to do all the, again, folks, it's, it's a much bigger process. We just showed you the very small, just the shrinking of the tenant. Yes. Okay. Okay, there's more to it. They're diagnosing ahead of time, realizing, you know, what you need to do. You know, there could be expanding. That usually happens first. Okay, usually expanding happens first. Everything gets worn out. The neck tendon gets uh, smaller. Uh, so expanding usually happens first. Sometimes you overexpand, which is when you need to shrink down. And it, I, I guess yes. if you're, a, if you're a, a player and you have an aftermarket neck, this would be something you could ask your technician about. Do yes. you have a collet shrinker? Yes. And if they say no, you maybe you don't want to go to that technician. Yeah. You, know, you might want to go to the guy down the street. I hate to say that, but whoever has the best tooling to get the best fit for your neck is, I mean, if they know how to use it, yes, it should work. It should. It should. Yes. Very good. Okay, think? Ryan. Well, thank you for that excellent demonstration. Well, We're thank gonna, you, Rich. Uh, you're very welcome. Well, Make you sure are. you guys uh, take 10 and shrinker, put it in the comments below. That's going to enter you into the drawing for next week for another 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up. Jesse, make sure you send me an email to richrich at musicmedic.com. We'll be back next week with how to cut, shape, and install springs. Uh, that's going to do it for now. Until next time, happy repairing.